Bismillah. I want to address uh, a letter of Shoghi Effendi's uh, issued in his name on the 11th of February 1934. This uh, letter can be found in the Light of Divine Guidance, Volume 1. Uh, pages, uh, I believe it's from 53 to uh, the end of 56. Now, it's quite a long letter, uh, the, this, but this letter can be found in the Baha'i Reference Library, which is online, so this is an official Baha'i page. Um, what is particularly interesting from several different angles, and this uh, letter has caused a lot of vexation amongst Baha'is for a very long time, and they've uh, tried to spin the context of, of this letter in, in many conceivable ways. But it is, worth, um, it is worth reviewing this letter, revisiting it, and um, ex especially one particular paragraph that occurs on page 54. And let me quote this. Uh, and this letter is in relation to Shoghi Effendi's attitude towards the Third Reich, which was at the time in its first year of existence, a little over... Uh, 12 months, so probably around 13 months it had already been in existence. Uh, just remember that this is a, the period after the Reichstag fire on the 27th of February 1933 uh, and very close to the period of, of one year after the Enabling Act uh, by the Nazi government was passed or rather rammed through the Reichstag that effectively uh, made all political parties other than the National Socialist Democratic or uh, National Socialist German Workers Party, National Socialistische Deutsche Arbeiter Partei, or the Nazi Party for short. Uh, and this was also the period where you still had the SA of Ernst Röhm running wild throughout the, all of the cities and major towns and villages of, of, uh, of Germany of the time, terrorizing the country and the political opposition terrorizing uh, the Protestant churches that weren't complying or weren't pulling rank be behind the Nazi regime of the time. This is one year into the economic sanctions imposed by the North American Jewish community against Germany uh, for the existence of the Nazi government. But it's also a very interesting time where you find the Anglo-Saxon elite on both sides of the Atlantic whether we're talking about the ruling classes of Great Britain or the finance class, uh, the finance class of capital class of Wall Street, uh, as well as their friends in the city of London supporting the Third Reich and the Nazis, uh, etc. This letter, um, as I mentioned, has been a thorn in the side of the Baha'is as long as one can any anyone can remember. But let me read you one paragraph of it, and that is where Shoghi Effendi states. At the outset, it should be made indubitably clear that the Baha'i cause, being essentially a religious movement of a spiritual character, stands above every political party or group, and thus cannot and should not act in contravention to principles, laws, and doctrines of any government. Obedience to the regulations and orders of the state is indeed the sacred obligation of every true and loyal Baha'i. Both Baha'u'llah and Abdul Baha have urged us all to be submissive and loyal to the political authorities of our respective countries. It follows, therefore, that our German friends are under the sacred obligation to wholeheartedly obey the existing political regime, whatever be their personal views and criticisms of its actual working. There is nothing more contrary to the spirit of the cause than open rebellion against the governmental authorities of a country, especially if they do not interfere and do not oppose the inner and sacred beliefs and religious convictions of the individual. And there's every reason to believe that the present regime in Germany, which has thus far refused to trample upon the domain of individual conscience in all matters pertaining to religion, will never encroach upon it in the near future unless some unforeseen uh, and unexpected ch changes take place. And this seems to be doubtful at present. Well, unquote. This letter is solid historical ter testimony to the fact that the prophesying faculties of the Guardian, the first Guardian of Baha'ism, Shoghi Effendi Rabbani, were quite uh, blunt, if not biased. Um, it is particularly interesting, as I mentioned, that it actually echoes the talking points of the Anglo-Saxon ruling classes of the time. And this is why this letter is important. Uh, not because of its prevarications and, and, and uh, equivocations, etc., which the Baha'is have kind of used as a way to say 
what it doesn't say. But what it does show is that, uh, that the Guardian had no faculty of prescience whatsoever, nor was he following very closely events in Germany of the time. Like I mentioned, this letter is issued one year after the Reichstag fire and the subsequent enabling act that effectively turned uh, Germany into a one-party totalitarian state. We have still not entered the period of the Kristallnacht, which is only two years away. Uh, nevertheless, you know, Jewish homes, properties, etc., um, were being confiscated at this present time, even before the, the imposition of the Nuremberg laws that were to come into effect the following year in 1935. Um, people were being rounded up. At the time, the majority of those who were being rounded up were leftists, uh, mainly communist members of the KPD, the, the Kommunistische Partei Deutschland, uh, and other liberal Democrats and whatnot, but particularly on the religious front, because it mentioned this, there was a whole, whole slew of Protestant churches, especially in, uh, in this province of Brandenburg, the, the more Prussian-oriented Protestant churches that were actually being accosted by the regime of the time, whether we're talking on the level of the SA or on the level of the various uh, ministries that had been set up by the Nazi regime of the time. And this is especially, this should be especially underscored because Yushogi Effendi uh, unequivocally prevaricates on this particular point. So the question is, why did Shoghi Effendi do so? And the conclusion is, is because the talking points of this particular letter uh, that caused such angst on uh, in the 1995-1996 period on the list talisman at uh, indiana.edu is because Shoghi Effendi is um, basically regurgitating and echoing the talking points of the Anglo-Saxon ruling classes of the time towards the reality of the Third Reich and Hitler uh, in Germany of that period. And this is what needs to especially be understood, you know, for the, you know, the Baha'is go out of the way to try to claim that they're independent. But at many of these various historical stages, we can actually pinpoint where they stand and that their alliance with the Anglo-Saxon power block is very conspicuous, and particularly on, on an issue such as the rise of the Third Reich in Germany, uh, that the guardian, the first guardian of Baha'ism, Shoghi Effendi, is, is echoing the very same talking points of the Anglo-Saxon elites, says it all. You know, I mean, that this is despite the fact of what comes afterwards. Uh, this is despite the fact that a few years later, actually a few Baha'is, German Baha'is, were in fact imprisoned by the regime. Nevertheless, at this point, at this um, over one year after the arrival of Hitler into political power in Germany, this was the, the you know this was uh, the foresight uh, of a guardian of uh, of the Baha'i faith, um, and this should basically tell us everything that we need need to know about um, the way uh, you know Baha'i alliances and Baha'i foresight actually work. So I'll leave it there.